of your Red Sox, though, John. Yes. Masataka, leading the AL in batting Masataka average. Yoshida, a very, very good hitter, as it turns out. What makes him so good? Why do you, Why does he have the best? For the folks who are uninitiated and are just seeing that, and they're like, wait, who? And also, how? How would you explain it best? What makes him so good? So I think the easiest way to explain why Masataki Yoshida is uh, near the top of the league in batting average is this. You look at his at his, at his ranks among, M among the MLB league leaders in the following stats. Contact rate, he is number 20 at 84.4%. Mm. Swing rate, number 17 in the league among qualified hitters, 41.1%. Zone swing rate, this is swings within the strike zone, number mm. 46 at 87.9%. But, you know, 46 doesn't sound all that great, but that's only two, he's only two percentage points away from being in a tie for 28th in that stat. Yeah. Uh, swinging strike rate, 16th in the majors among qualified hitters. That's just 6.3%. That's some Luis Arias shit right there. Uh Expected batting average, 27th in the majors, a 283 against a, and against a 292 actual batting average. So he's not mm. wildly overperforming his expected stats. This is the f most fun one to me. Strikeout rate, fifth in the majors, 11.3%, mm. with the third best isolated power in that top 10. Uh, the other guys, uh, alongside guys like Ronald Acuna and uh, I've already forgotten the name of the other guy. But again, a very impressive place to be, particularly for the power he has. This is the other part of it too. He mashes fastballs. When hmm. you look at uh, when you look at run value against four seamers, plus sixteen among qualified hitters, that is fourth in the majors. The sixth best ba sixth best batting average on four seamers at four oh two. The tenth hmm. lowest whiff rate against four seamers in the major leagues. Huh. Um, this is a guy who just controls the strike zone very well, does not swing and miss, and when you throw him a fastball, he is all over it. He is geared up for it. Yeah. That holds true if you throw him if you throw him off speed stuff too. He has a 302 batting average against off speed pitches. Breaking pitches have been the thing that's really given him the most trouble so far, but mm -hmm. he can handle hard heat. He can handle it uh, wherever you really put it in the strike zone. I think that's the easiest way to explain why Yoshida has been as successful as he's been. He controls the strike zone and he doesn't get beat by fastballs. If you can do that, you are pretty much locked yourself into being a high batting average guy and he brings above average power to the plate too. So, that's been Arguably one of the best moves Heimblum has made is to sign him to a long-term deal. The one real downside with Shida, he's a pretty awful defender in the outfield. He really should be a DH only bat going forward. Uh, and obviously his age, you know, he's already 29 or 30, I believe. So not a guy you're really counting on uh, where there's still more to come. But if he can hold this kind of floor, uh, he's a valuable offensive player pretty much no matter what. I like it. I like it, John um last thing here before we get out of here tonight um team spotlight i wanted to do one of these this week um the blue jays yes the team that's kind of forgotten about in the al east we talk about the red sox people are kind of pleasantly surprised about where they're at yankees obviously could be sellers we talked about them at nauseum last week so check that out on this very feed um the folks love the orioles like that's already over a thousand views in Let, let's uh, a little over us. a day on youtube the orioles fans are in uh, they're just they're so happy that people are covering uh the orioles being good hey we've always checked the tapes we've always been a pro orioles content uh podcast many people forget that um people and forget then obviously this. the rays with their their start to the year and where they're at the team that's forgotten that's good not great are the toronto blue jays john taylor and ahead of the deadline what fascinates you about the blue jays where do you think they are do you think they're a real contender what uh where are you at with the blue jays so they're definitely a real contender. By our playoff odds, they're at 68.9% with a 56.8% chance to, to win a wild card spot. Those are the highest wild card odds in the American League right now, mm. just ahead of the Orioles at 52.2. The only difference is the Orioles have a much better chance of winning the division because they are currently leading it, as opposed to the Blue Jays, who are six and a half games out. Nonetheless, mm. uh, what I really like about the Blue Jays is they are just a really well-balanced team. They've got a great lineup, obviously. They're a good defensive club. They've got a great number one starting pitcher in Kevin Gaussman. They have a, a great closer in Jordan Romano. I think if you're Toronto, what you're kind of looking at at the deadline is probably just kind of tweaking around the edges. One, I think, is mm. you probably want to find some level of back of the rotation help uh, to a certain degree because for as good as, as surprisingly good as you say Kikuchi has been, for as helpful, for as surprisingly useful as Jose Barrios has been, uh, you know, you've still got, it's been a pretty up and down season for Chris Bassett. And then beyond that, you know, you're, you're talking about, a you know, and, and then Alec Manoa, you have just no clue what you're going to get going forward this season. I don't think he's a guy that Blue Jays can rely on in any capacity. So maybe that's a team where you're looking for, uh, and it doesn't have to be a Giolito type, but maybe it's a guy like a Lance Lynn 
Mm-hmm. You know, someone who can just give them some innings toward the back and and lessen their reliance on Manoa, lessen their reliance on Kikuchi, uh, give them some help. Oh.